Welcome to the FDI. You are the operator, the person in the chair, solving murders, preventing cyber attacks, ready to help agents in the field. And they'll need your help investigating and uncovering clues. Analyze evidence with cutting edge technology. And if you find anything too interesting, ignore that. It certainly won't lead to some sort of conspiracy that leads to a dark mystery that uncovers the truth. Each case is a story to unravel and you never know where the twists and turns might take you. So definitely write notes. The Operator is out right now. It is so very a Jesse game. Pick it up on Steam, link down below. Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger, what up? Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the Geek Enders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you're all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast without a doubt. And welcome, welcome to Geek Enders. Ba, ba, ba. How have our beefs matured? Have we well aged mm. our beefs? Mmm, musky beef. Have our beefs been well aged? You mm. know, so okay, are we throwing Fasiani into the deep end here? Are we talking about our beefs immediately? End. Look at me, man. I'm ready. My fists are My swinging. Goodness. I, don't, I don't care I don't who's. Know. Here today on Geek Enders with our special guest, Alex Fasciani, friend of the show. Hello. 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 Friend of the pod. Hello. Friend of the pod, Alex Fasciani. Hello. Fellow beefer. If you're like, hey, where would I know Alex from? The internet, you nerd. But more importantly, (laughs) uh, Alex is super beer broding. Broding? That's right. Yeah, uh, Super Beard Brody is my, uh, find me on Twitter at Super Beard Brody. (laughs) Super Beard Brody is very good. (laughs) Right? Uh, Obviously, Chaluminati. The I'm gonna say the heart and soul of Chaluminati, mm. and the heart then, and soul of my podcast of my of my uh, right. paycheck, and then uh, Star Wars Old Cannon Book Club, hanging out doing stuff and other important things. But uh, I'm not involved, so like <laughs> they're not important to me. I'm on a show with Jesse called Scary Game Squad that's been going longer than almost everything else that we do. <laughs> it's true, dude. I love true. Scary Game Squad. It's 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 good stuff, and I, honestly, this is the one show where I feel like like a plucky like i feel like i'm like like red robin coming in here or like i'm i'm like uh like black agar bolt again yeah oh. yeah black agar bolt no he's too he's too high status you can't i'm not black agar bolt at sucks, worst dude. at sucks. best i'm triton if we're using inhumans as a metric i'm triton <laughs> and you're black agar bolt again and i'm you're black agar bolt again no i'm yeah, like that you're medusa dog. i'm like you're the black dog. bolt you're, <laughs> you're no i'm the dog no i'm the dog the Do- Dodger is uh, the one with the hair. Yeah, Medusa. I don't know what that means. The queen of the Inhumans. Don't worry about it. You're, the, you're one of the best characters ever written. Both of you guys great. are so okay. lucky. Lockjaw the dog is, is uh, great also. Yep. Anyway, we started beefs last week, and I'm asking if they paid we did off. T- okay, so... Has anyone um, called us and be like, I'm in the beef? So Okay, no. I, I really threw myself in the deep end here, Jesse, okay? I was reached out to... By a VTuber, a lovely VTuber named Matarakan, who was like, do you want to be in a huge collab with a bunch of VTubers playing Mario Kart? And I was like, holy shit, this is the perfect setting to start beef. (laughs) Yes. This is the perfect setting for my VTuber beef to begin. Because people start beef unprovoked when playing Mario Kart. I don't even need a reason, right? It's, It's justifiable. It doesn't shine that poorly on you. Right? And can I also say, let's call it Veef, if it's going to be Veef. Veef. Ooh, it's good. Yeah, virtual Beef. Veef. Yeah, Veef. Yes. It's um, Beef, but like it could be whatever you want it to Beef. 
So here's the issue. I do not have a powerful enough personality to break through 10 uh -huh. VTubers. You... No, listen. 10 other VTubers who are all already beefing with one another. <laughs> Death. That's part of the that's part I of the couldn't, vibe. There, I really I couldn't I couldn't shine as a beefer in that environment. I didn't know any of them. They were all already beefing with each other. It was it was not the setting that I needed. You I weren't ready think. for a heel turn, is what it is. It feels I wasn't, hard to I wasn't, it feels hard I, to walk into the middle of the village and cause a problem. And just kick be over the, the heel. Well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it also I you know, I also place. feel like I, I agree. But also I should have showed up on your with your VTube character and been like, you know what's weird? VTubing. I just don't get it. What are you trying to hide? What are you hiding? See, Why can't you show your face? What are you trying to hide from people? See, I'd start some shit. He's doing the like, he's doing the like, the like weird, like alt-right, like 20 year old <laughs> guy who wears a suit beef. He's, he's like, he's got the, he's got the dirty beef. He's got the, I'm the, trying the, to the start a beef. beef. Yeah, Dodger was saying that. she couldn't do it because they were all beef and you got to out beef the beef. You know what I'm saying? No, like, I, if you go I also to a beef feel place, though, like, like the, the best heels, if we're going to, if we're going to like equate things, right. The best heels, I think are also really good at whatever the setting is. Does that make sense? I realized yes. when playing Mario Kart this week, I only play this game with babies. And I'm not, I'm not saying emotional, like emotionally adults oh, that right, act her. like babies. You called all I'm, those VTubers babies. Oh, shit. Just wait, this guy. just wait, just wait, just wait. I literally only play this game with children. I don't know how to play the game. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, you mean you play sure. it like how an actual baby would play I Mario play Kart? I play it how babies play it. Like and they I put was the bumpers like, on for you. I yeah. am in a committed marriage with 11th and 12th place here. And I never got out. <laughs> I never left. Sure. So then so it turned into me being like, guys, we have to do this again. And I need a Rocky montage in the middle. Like I need, I need, I need to learn growth. how to drift. Yeah. <laughs> I have to learn how to drift. Because I don't know how to do anything. I couldn't. So I had, didn't have, like, I the had jumps. no sway. Sure. Like all the little the micro thing. things where if you like boost into different things. I get you. I understand. I'm the same place. Here's the thing. When you started falling behind. Yeah. Dodger. Yeah. I realized that you didn't have the same high school experience as me. <laughs> but I'm going to let you in on a secret. Okay. When you start falling behind everyone else. You uh -huh. don't just accept your place. You lash out and become a <laughs> class clown. And only then, instead mm -hmm. of learning, you turn it back on the teacher like, you suck and I'm going to make your life a living hell by making goofs in class the entire time, which is what you should have done mm. by causing drama. You, unfortunately, you You're went to the steakhouse and you were, you were overwhelmed by the steak. You saw all the beef there and you were overwhelmed. What you should have done is come in and got that $1,000 piece of shit and been like, oh! And they brought it out to you and like everyone's embarrassed for you but you're like i've got more money than god so i'm just, like you should have done this it this is thera beef this is thera beef right now that's what we're doing now this is a session yeah. for jesse now you got overwhelmed you should have gone in there and been like man all i do is play with children one bing that's very good two start beefs be like uh Man, I can't because I can't see any of your faces. I don't know like uh, what you're really thinking. Like not being able to see your eyes and your emotions scares me. Two, right? You gotta keep going. Like, what are you trying not? You gotta start beats. I can't. I can't do that when I'm a literal mushroom. I don't have. Yeah, that well, that's brain. what makes it yeah. fun. Is that I'm I'm shitting on VTubers while being a VTuber? <laughs> that's hilarious. Yes, that's Let's funny. That. We should have swapped spots. You're right. <laughs> I could have got us beefing. Oh, you man. could have started the beef. This could have been the, the people. This there could be like fifty thousand people watching right now to see how would react to oh the beefs. You know what I'm saying? It's like like just like fifteen hundred. Um, yeah, you know. Close. <laughs> here's what I'm gonna say. Here's what I'm gonna say. Um, yeah. I genuinely thought that you guys were talking about procuring like fine beef steaks at the top of this show. <laughs> And I've been carrying that part of How's this in my heart beef? this whole time. I literally was excited to know, like, I thought you guys had, like, some, some beef hanging in a closet somewhere, picking up some flavors. I thought that's where we were at. And, you know, I, like, I like, I like the other type of beef, too. Like, you know, like, I like starting to fight. I like, I like fighting online. But, like, I would love, 
like a nice dry age, like 28 day aged slice. You can get that. I we yeah. we went there. We experienced that. We got a 48 eight day aged beef the other like. All right, it was before COVID, but it was yeah, good. It was it a while ago. That restaurant that restaurant has now been uh, shuttered because of the, the <laughs> pandemic. One, but uh, of course it is. <laughs> but it was, but it was. was good beef. Yeah, that was crazy. That beef was, I don't even know how to describe that. It tasted like jerky. It was weird as hell. Yeah, it was, it was, it tastes like a shoe, but it was like a good shoe. It was like, I like, it was like a, it was like a $4,000 Italian loafer. Like, this is delicious. Yeah, it was delicious. It was weird, but like, yeah. Mm hmm. Dude, <laughs> Alex, how are you? Me? Yeah. How are how you? How am I doing? Well, you I know, feel, to give I, you a window. You're so yeah. far from me. Like, I know. I, like, yeah. you know, friendship wise, distance wise, we haven't we haven't yeah. chit chatted in so long. Yeah, that's true. I, I'm. I tell people this all the time. I'm basically the same uh, as I have been for the longest. But I'll tell you this: like, I'll as a window into my actual trials at the at yeah. this moment. I'm getting married in like one month's time, <laughs> and. I don't have a wedding planner. Right. Uh, because it's my little magic party. And I'm facing all kinds of challenges that you might associate with a wedding planning. And so, like, you know, I'm chipper, I'm cheery, I'm not in trouble, but I have like two extra jobs that I have. So I'm just very tired right now. Yeah. Uh, in gen as a human, but like in life, I'm doing great. I just got a new dog. I don't know if you guys know about Smitty. He's out on a walk because uh, he's literally a demon. And uh, as much as he loves me alone, no one will ever see like his calm, the fact that he's like. Like, I've never seen a dog stare at me like that. But once somebody's here, he's like, Arr! like, he's just extremely <laughs> scary. So we're uh, he's a rescue. We're training him to be uh, we're training the jail mentality out of him. Sure. Uh, and he's my best friend in life. So that's that's what's going on. His name's Smitty. He's a he's a cattle dog like Snoopy. He's Snoopy's like Sith brother. <laughs> we also just got a dog. I believe I, uh, it it's um, I've never had an indoor dog before. Little guy. So I'm no no not a little. She's gonna be ginormous. She's already really? so big. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's a lot. God, dogs are so much. Oh my they god, they really are. They yeah. really, really are. You always mm -hmm. think that it's gonna be like uh, a cat, where you just kind of like put it in there and then it like idles, kind of like goes <laughs> and sits somewhere, like goes and gathers resources for you. So when you can need to build another unit, you can just build it. But dogs are more like uh, like a like like Jurassic Park as an animal, like just like as one creature, they like teach you just how unprepared you are to own them all the time they're crazy i love them yeah i feel like uh, you should know these things like it's the reason why i don't have any pets because i i know that they're a pain in the ass mm -hmm. yeah but you like, met my last dog right yeah but your last dog was less a dog and more of a human being in dog clothing yeah and so is my other so is my current dog except this dog uh is a human being who has been through the system and needs to be deprogrammed from like pulling sure. every time anybody looks at him for three seconds. Like I get it, but also like, you know, a dog is, a, is, is it's like you got to take care of someone and uh, you know, a cat is still the same. You still got to like pick up their shit and stuff, but like I've had, I've had a cat. I've had a cat too. Like my, my cat was great. I had him for a really long time. The only reason he, he wasn't my cat anymore is because he moved away. He got a job, he moved out. He got a job. I'm so happy for yeah. him. Yeah, he had kids. Yeah. He had bills to pay. Yeah. Uh, but you know, I don't know. Like, it's weird because it's just like a baby. Like, they just have like problems sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm the saying, dog just yeah. hoops blood, and you're like, "What? What was that?" And then he's like, "I'm fine. What are you talking about?" And you're like, "All right, I'm just gonna forget about that. I'm just gonna are somehow you sure? move past that." Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. He's like, and the dog's like. You know, he's just vibing. You know, it's it's a, it's a vibe. Yeah. the The crazy thing to me is, hey, everybody, if you uh, like Chaluminati, there was an episode that we did that was all about dogs, specifically. That's true. Um, 
underworld dogs, but uh, but we touched on on what I'm about to say a little bit. So if it sounds engaging, you should go listen to it. But anyways, um, we've had dogs for so long as like a species. And it's crazy because now you can literally be like that that type of dog, that type of dog uh, is literally bred to sit on laps. So sure. that's probably my speed. Or yeah. that type of dog will bark all day long because it was because it was supposed to bark. So it will bark even in a setting that doesn't call for barking. <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's like my dog where even though he's not in danger, when the neighbors across the way outside my window open their screen door at six in the morning, he takes it upon himself to tell me and Kelly and everybody who lives in my building that somebody's trying to kill us all. Right. Uh, each morning. Yeah. And, and I'm proud of him. Yeah, exactly. He's he doing his job, job right. He takes that job very seriously. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the it would just be really nice thing. if you could help him resign, maybe, you know? <laughs> yeah. That would be chill. Like, just give him, maybe if I do, like, if I give him, like, a little watch. And I right. Tell yeah. Him, like, you Thank done you for your service. Case. You yeah. did really yeah. good. Shake his paw. Yeah. 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 You can take a little picture with him and, and the mayor. Yeah. Uh, write a little letter of resignation the and then take his paw yeah. and, and do one of those. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think that would be, I think that would be good for him. But then it would be like those movies where, you know, it's like an old detective who retired years ago, but like he just could tell something's wrong, dude. Riggs? He can't, he can't live it alone. <laughs> something's going on, Riggs. Mm-hmm. It's my I'm last week on the force. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would. So worst part is like, again, Riggs. I can see the Disney movie of this where it's like, <laughs> he used to be a dog who barked all the time and he would look after the family, but. We had to get him to stop. We, we retired him. He went up and we, we, we like gave him the paw print thing and we did the watch and everything was fine. But something's wrong with him. He's just deteriorating. He's not, he's not the dog he once was. He's just laying around doing nothing. It's like, don't you see? You got to have him working again. He's got, he's, he lost he's what he loved. Dog. He's got to start barking. Yeah. He's a working dog. Uh, oddly enough, out. that actually happens to working dogs. If they have like a set job. No, for real. If they have tell me the police dogs are like, yes, I'm five days out of retirement. I miss it. I miss it. Yes. One hundred percent. Dogs that get like hardcore trained to do the same job and they do it really well for years and years when they have to like retire because they're injured or they're old. They actually start to go really stir crazy because yeah. they don't have a job anymore and they are totally. unsatisfied with their lives. They are. I was listening, like to, a, I was listening yeah. to a podcast about this cop who was like a canine cop. I think it was Radio Lab or something like that. And it was literally like he retired his dog, his like police dog that he had for many years since we kept it at home, like his real dog, because he was like, you know, still many years left on his life, but just too old to be a, a uh, like regular duty police dog. And so the guy gets his other dog, his like new police dog. And as part of that, you have to take the dog home because you kind of have to get the dog to be your dog. And it was like there was this one dog who was like on painkillers now because he's old and he's like home all the time and he lives in the crate. And then the other dog comes along and he's like all young greenhorn and the old dog's like mad at the young dog and is like doing like substance abuse and like having the exact like the same exact vibes as like a retired. You mean the plot of Lethal Weapon 1? Like like literally the dog's like jumping off buildings, just doing whatever, like. Driving around in his like, car. I'm for this shit. Yeah. 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 <gasps> Take, stopping suicides himself because he's, he himself is suicidal. Right. Right. Yeah. He understands. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a real story. Like, don't date my daughter. <laughs> right. Like, there's a whole, yeah, there's a whole vibe to it. And then it's like, it's like that movie with uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman and Robert De Niro, where Robert De Niro, like, hates Philip Seymour Hoffman, who's like his, like, gay neighbor who teaches him how to dance or whatever they do. It's incredible. Incredible movie. <laughs> I don't I've remember the name it. of it, but it's a good one. Don't remember huh? the name of that movie. <laughs> Sounds great. I, look, I used to work at Blockbuster Video for like eight years. I just can't. I don't know the names of the fucking movies anymore. I've just seen them all. I just, I just know every movie from up to 2010. Sherlock Do Holmes, you... A Game of Shadows. I, I'm fluent with this. <laughs> every, everything from then and before the second Sherlock Holmes. I know you. I've seen you. Sure. Mm. No, you... I'm not thinking of good as it gets. 
Do you have one of those memories where like, um, or just one of those brains, I guess, where if you're watching a movie and you hear a voice on a character or something, you'll be like, I know exactly who that motherfucker is. Yes. I'm like that guy. Exactly. And Kelly was like the opposite. She's like, she jokes that she's like face blind compared to me. I dude, Sam will hear, we'll be watching a goddamn cartoon movie with my kid. Yeah. And the old walrus will talk one time and Sam will be like, is that so-and-so? And I'll look it up. And every time he's right. And it pisses me off. Brett, my, my co-host on Super Beard Bros, Brett is like that, except he also like says Brett the name Rayon. of the actor. Yeah. He actually like says the name of the actor. And I'm like, where do you? And I ask him like how he knows. And it's because he watches these like YouTube videos that are like summaries of movies all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like a thing. Like I guess I guess mm-hmm. people like to be like immersed in like the culture of like video stores and like eighties, nineties VHS rentals, but also like they don't wanna they don't got that time mm-hmm. to watch all those movies, so they watch like a thirty minute narrated version of the movie instead. So yeah, Brett also knows like Like the, the Cliff ca- Notes? Yeah, he knows like the capital of every country too. He's like that guy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's all oh, there's degrees, but if, if, if you ever end up out of a coma and you need to know what movies uh, to watch for the past however long, I'm your guy. And I have experience doing exactly that one time. That was the best Help, day of work. Helping, helping someone who lost a few years of their life. Two nice, like 65 year old women came in to the store and she was like, I was in a coma for 12 years. What did I miss? And I was like, how much time you got? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, great that day would work. be so fascinating, though. Yeah, I uh, I was like, no idea what Gladiator is, The Matrix. No, no, and they were like, no. Of course, it was only like 2006 at the time, so like I, you know, those oh, were new movies been like, to me. Let me tell you about Lord of the Rings. That yeah. would be my no, go-to. real talk. What a pleasure, right? Like for me to get to tell somebody about so many movies that exist. Mm. I'm like, you know that Batman? You know that Batman character? This director, Christopher He's Nolan, went right hog now. wild on that guy. Yeah. <laughs> he went straight up hog wild on Batman. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. It's a great job. 12 years. That's like in the early 2000s, you would have missed all the 90s classics too. Oh my God. It would have been like, let me tell you about the three years Nick Cage was in everything. Dude, I know. I like that was what I was doing. I literally, I was a, there's, there's two types of um, people uh, who work at Blockbuster who wear the normal uniform that aren't managers. And one of them is called a CSR, which is like the cash register person, like the typical generic, like entry level Blockbuster employee. And then there were ESs, which are entertainment specialists. That was what I. Ooh, were you a specialist? Yes. You have to want you have you have to want to be one of these, and then you rent five movies a week from the store and watch them Whoa. every week. And then you are like a caddy to people, and you walk around the store, and then like at the end of it, you try and sell them like some shit that got blockbuster out of business in the end. You know what I mean? Like at the, you, you, you know, at the end you try and sell, Hey, like, you know, Netflix, you want like a worse version of that, that costs more money. And they're like, no. And then you're like, okay, see ya. Got it. <laughs> yeah. so you had to do the GameStop thing where people just want to buy the games. You're trying to get them like added on to eight other plans. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Oof. exactly. Man. Sounds like it was like the perfect job for you at the at the time that you had it though. Definitely it was formative, I would say. Like I like my letterbox is is vast, but I never write reviews, but you can see like I've I've seen like every movie before 2010. Word. Sherlock After that, Holmes, stop watching films. And then I didn't sh- stop watching them, done. but I just went straight up my ass and just watched like only the like hipsteriest movies that there are because I only had time for those. I do think about that sometimes, how my, my viewing habits have changed so drastically now that I have so many options of things to watch. I don't enjoy movies nearly as much as I used to, unless I'm going to the cinema. Context is extremely, extremely underrated when it comes to enjoying entertainment, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like, 
even even simple things, right? Like you can start with like a Game Boy game, right? Like if you think about a Game Boy game and then you think about like, I don't know, what's your favorite like most simple Game Boy game? Like think of like Mole Mania or think of like, uh, you know, Donkey Kong or like a, just a generic like early simple Game Boy game. And then you put that on like a 55 inch flat screen TV and you hand yourself a PlayStation controller and you sit 15 feet away from the TV and you play the Game Boy game on the TV. Yes, you are playing the game, right? But like, it's very different than playing it curled up in a chair with a Game Boy with a little light shining on you yeah. that you can't see the screen without. And like, one is how the game was made, right? And one is like some crazy future, like context is meaningless, like application of like the software running on a screen. And I think like, for movies, it's the same thing. And even for TV shows, like per, like the decision paralysis is like your brain forgetting how to care about stuff. It really sucks. It mm -hmm. really sucks. You should always just ask someone what movie to watch. That's my opinion. Is like, ask somebody interesting what movie you should watch. And if you do that, at least it will have a purpose. I was going to say, uh, I entirely rely on the younger people around me to fill me in on what I need to see. Because most mm -hmm. of the time now, I just don't. Like like you're saying, Dukes, I either am I have decision paralysis, like choice paralysis, or I'm like, I don't know what to watch. I'm not gonna watch anything. Or I have seen everything I want to watch, and there's nothing that it all seems like white noise. There's just so much and it most of it's trash. And so I like don't watch stuff. And I wait for people and I just want to say that uh in the office the past couple weeks, I discovered most of the people here haven't seen the movie Twister. And the new Twister yeah. movies is coming out. Oh so I was like, god. oh my god, we gotta watch Twister in the office. So right. we watched Twister. I forgot, like, what a ridiculous movie. Love that movie. It's... <laughs> and then Twister legitimately hilarious. It's like it's like Godzilla minus one, but a tornado instead of Godzilla. Yeah. It's fucking so funny. Yeah. The entire like I, I will always remember the like, well, what's an F5? Like the finger of God. Like that <laughs> shit is incredible. Yeah. Like what a great like. So anyway, uh, just to give you the update is I looked over here in our office chat and all that I see is, holy shit, guys, Twisters was insane. Boom. I'm in. I'm going to go watch Twisters. Like, that's all I need is like Twisters is insane. Done. Mm -hmm. All right. I'll I hear it's I hear it's quite, quite thrilling, quite thrilling film. Mm -hmm. I'm here for it. based on the trailer for it. It looks exactly like the first movie except they just uh, it looks like what they did with with star wars episode eight they just like retold the very first film it seems right. just like that and i'm like you know what i'm here for it give me the updated episode version where it's like instead of the, the couple trying to get back it's like i'm the bad guy i'm the guy who was uh the bad guy in the first one except now i'm in love with the, the like the female character from the first one it's gonna be great i'm excited um okay so then if if we're saying the the best way to engage with like a movie or a show is to do it through like community, right? Sure. Um, what's why don't why don't we all suggest a thing? Oh, people, a movie? God. Yeah. Oh my God, please! Why don't, I will suggest. 1, why don't we all suggest movies. a movie or a show that right now that yeah. we've watched recently that we that Great. Done. yeah. Dodger, you go first. Okay. Um, my niece, uh, again, feeding into the community thing. My niece is staying with us from America right now. Um, and she's, uh, about 10 years younger than me. Um, and came to our house and immediately was like, homie, have you seen Ultraman Rising? And I was like, no, I didn't even, I didn't even know there was a new Ultraman thing. And she was like, holy fuck, sit down. We're watching this movie. Oh, the animated um, one that's on uh, Netflix? Yes. It is so good. The animation style is super cool. It's done by the, the company that does all of the Ultraman stuff. So they really, they love, they cherish the franchise, right? Um, it's literally Ultraman um, finding a kaiju baby and having to raise it and keep it safe. It's mm -hmm. so good. Ultraman it's so is, good. I cried. It's great. It's legit. Yeah. <laughs> I recommend. Ultraman and Godzilla are like the most deceptively, you get so emotionally invested in those characters and they seem so dumb from the outside. Like, <laughs> yeah. like they seem so stupid from the outside because they're these huge, it's like, it's like not knowing about Star Wars 
and then like watching like the acolyte right like it's like it's like weird but like ultraman is just a treasure trove of coolness yeah every element of it is so interesting if you don't know about it already i don't know it's cool uh yeah who's whose turn is it to recommend who's something? going next it's your turn sir okay 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 if i can only recommend one thing right now in the spirit of twister in the spirit of like people driving around real fast and trying to like do nifty things uh yeah. I'm going to recommend that you guys watch Unstoppable. I don't know if you've seen this movie or not. Mm -mm. It's like maybe like 15 years old. It's got Denzel Washington, who's uh, playing my my uh, dog, who's being uh, retired pretty soon. He's like an old train man who knows what he's doing. Yeah, it's directed by Tony Scott. Stop. And, uh, the, new, the new train man is Chris Pine, and he's also on the train. Okay. And then some like guy, and it's it's based on a real thing, and some guy working the train clicks some button, and the train takes off without a person in it, and is racing down the train tracks. And there's like a big turn in this town in the in like rural Pennsylvania or something like that, and they have to like figure out how to stop the train before it hits this turn because when it hits this turn, it's just gonna fly off and like turn the area it's going to glass the area right and uh it fucking rules and uh there's a character in this movie like there's a bunch of famous people in this movie i forget who the 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 like kind of like stressed out chick in the booth is it's somebody else who's like really awesome uh but i haven't watched this movie in a little while but it, twister reminded me of it but the best guy is there's like this one dude who like tracks all the trains and he's straight up like an extra from Twister. He's like a guy from, he's like one of the storm chasers from Twister. And he's like, all right, let's go. And he's the one who like, right. He like drives along the train. And he has like long, he's like a long, he looks like Dale Gribble, like was given a purpose in his life young and just like blossomed as a human being. He's, he looks like he could be in Twister. Uh, it's a great fucking movie and uh, you should watch it. I nice. bet you will be surprised at how simple and straightforward it is. All right. Jesse. Those are fine films. Tell her. <laughs> yeah. Go on. Might I suggest you all take a trip into the weird. First off, have you ever heard of a fine, it's an actor, small indie actor named Nicolas Cage. Um, <laughs> Nicolas Cage partnered with A24 to create what I think is the weirdest wackiest movie i've ever seen called dream scenario okay. oh my god i want to see that movie dream scenario is about a man who appears in other people's dreams and he doesn't know why he's doing it and everyone sees him and he becomes famous for a dude who just appears in people's dreams and then people start to get really weird about it they're like why are you in my dream dude let me tell you Mwah. solid cage acting pure nick cage i love that movie Great. I love that movie. I love that. I love the premise of that movie because mm. it's based on that weird eyebrows man. On yep. the Internet. If you have a chance, go to thisman.org and just never sleep again. <laughs> we did. We did an episode on Chuluminati. It's literally just like a guy who appears in people's dreams. And I'm not going to give you a warning on going to that website because it's not that scary, but it's a disturbing little picture of an eyebrow man. Yeah. And it kind of looks like Nick Cage in, in this movie. And I think that's supposed to be the point. Is, yep. is there any sound on the website? Not that I know of. Should I, I go believe... look at it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, sure, it's if, you really... wanna, if you want to see the man. Yeah, it's not. Uh, I'm worried. It's not so bad. What is it? It's not, so no, bad. It's not, it's not creepy. It's just like it, a it is weird creepy, looking dude. But it's, that's all it is, is creepy. Thisman.org. Yeah. You see him? Oh. Yeah, it's it's really it's not, it's not like I said, it's not like a jump scare website. It's just like it that's literally him. looks like Nick Cage oh. in the movie. Yeah. He reminds me of um Pee Wee Herman. <laughs> hey, kinda sleeping. I learned it from from the way <laughs> from the way you pitched it, I thought it was literally like Manwa style going to be just like a a fully black website with just a face. <laughs> yes. Like it's cute. And then it, it, was, like, it wasn't that. Yeah. It's good That's shit. That's my suggestion. Get good weird shit. with it. Kids. All right. 
So dream chat. Remember these. Jesse suggests dream sequence, right? Dream scenario. Dream scenario. scenario. Alex suggests unstoppable. unstoppable. And I suggest I'm Ultraman unstoppable. Rising. Ultraman I'm Rising. Unstoppable. Yeah. You almost made me change what I was going to suggest and suggest Shin Ultraman and Shin Kamen Rider as like a double <laughs> suggestion. Because yeah. if you haven't, if you watch Shin Godzilla and you go around telling everybody how good Shin Godzilla is all the time and then you don't watch Shin Ultraman and Shin Kamen Rider, you're messing up. You're messing up. They're good. And if They're you good like content. Evangelion, it's Anosan, who is like the creative force between all those movies. So go, go, go. Speaking of Ava, um, this past week I watched some dude's like two and a half hour video where he breaks down uh, the entire movie. Oh, was it called the end of Evangelion? Just kidding. I mean, <laughs> I mean, yeah. but like he breaks it down in a way, and I was just like, why am I watching this? Like, I, I know what this movie, I've seen this movie. I want, and I watched the entire thing. And it was just this dude being like, here's. What's brilliant about this film? As you can That's see. That's my favorite kind of YouTube video. And it was just like, okay, yeah, take me away. Let's go. And he like deep dove head first mm. into the red goop at the end of that film. And was like, Absolutely. so like, what? Are, and he's like, and in this scene, he's choking her. But like, what does that mean? Because as you, I'm like, what does that mean, dude? Take me away. Let Tell me. <laughs> yeah. That's, and here's the thing. I feel like most people need a video like that because that movie is bonkers true i I feel like my favorite type of youtube video is like a genius just being a genius like unfiltered like uh there's a there's a channel i've been watching called virgin rock have you seen that channel (laughs) no virgin rock no i think it's kind of like a joke but like it's this woman who's named like amy oh shit Dude, I did watch her because yeah. I watched her do uh, the one winged one angel. Wing one. angel. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. So she's she's a harpist and she's like a music expert and she's like okay. a teacher and she like lit, she's completely ignorant to like modern popular music of the past like seventy years. She has no idea anything. She just knows the classics. And right. she like l- puts on these like beautiful, expensive headphones. She wears the same outfit in every single video, same like perfect hairstyle every time. And then she just calmly explains what she's gonna do. She like reacts to the you know like musicians who are like really activated. Like, yes, yeah, yeah. She like does a little bit of that. She stops it, talks. It's unbelievable, unbelievable. Dude, I think I think one of my favorite forms of content, which I it sounds like this is what it is. Um, I think one of my favorite forms of content are people saying, I want to find some new music, suggest a song to me. And they just yeah. like blind listen to songs that are thrown their way. And it's always such a huge variety of music. And it's just, it's really interesting watching yeah. somebody just go blind into a song. I love it. People love to like blow someone's mind. Like it's fun <laughs> because the thing that's fun for the audience is being like, I know you and this will this will challenge you which is a cool relationship to have with the audience my re- yeah. my relationship is like here's what I think and then somebody I've never spoken to is like go kill yourself and that you know that's that's how mine is but I you know I like uh I like it when the when the when the conversation is like excited and everybody's and everybody's hype that's yeah. a cute I like the guy who eats a different old sandwich every day same thing where he he eats like these old recipes of sandwiches from like the 40s Mm -hmm. 30s videos are like two and a half minutes each time he gets like three thousand views a video but then like whenever he does he'll be like hey i'm like out of town for like uh a week but he does one every day so he's like who can any of my famous viewer friends like help me do it and it's like a-list comedians like jumping in and doing it so you know the people who are watching this are like real it's it's crazy great stuff that's fun. That's cute. Man, I'm trying to find the guy who Crendor and I found a dude who I love. He might be my favorite React content person on the internet. And it's just like this dude who is he's in his kitchen slash bedroom slash whatever. And he just started the video, lights one up, and then reacts. And it's the most genuine, honest reactions I've ever the man is just like, oh, what the hell? 
It's so good. I love Hold him. On. I love him. You can make you can make money doing that. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, who knew? I honestly I don't know that you can though, because I feel like the copyright stuff is out of control. Yeah. You think but, I can get free weed though, at least? I would hope so. Yeah. I would hope so. That'd be lit. Literally. Man, it sucks. Like I can't weed. find him. Like I don't it's our, there's so many React people now that it's just impossible to find like the guy you found originally. Mm. But um yeah. The real, the real dankness, right? Like the real, like the feeling of like going to a record store or a comic book shop and finding that old crusty edition that's like on the shelf and it like is nowhere and you can't believe you're looking at it and all that stuff. The real dankness of all YouTube channels is the sub thousands. To sure. me. Oh yeah. To me, that's the best. Th those are the best channels and I find one every couple of years that I get obsessed with. Um, but the curse, the curse of those channels, which I learned the first time that I made one, my, my thing mm. was I talked about it on a microphone and it like changed the ecosystem. Right. It's like prime directive. It's like, oh, obviously Dude. I'm not a hugely famous person, right? I'm not extremely famous, but I am here talking on a microphone, you know, live to over 1500 people and people are going to watch this right so right. people are listening and i said the name of a channel like this one time and then the channel became about me and it scared the shit out of me so i uh i don't oh, tell no. i don't tell anybody the names of these channels anymore unless you know me personally but oh my god the people that are like the warriors of the sub 1000s who like make 5,000 videos, it's like part of their lifestyle. It's not for the viewers. They, they have like a show format. They act their ass off in the videos. Like that shit is like where every video has like 270 views and there's like one every sure. day. That's, that's the dream channel. That's the, that's the dream find. That's there's, the dankest channel you can find. There was this girl who did react content and it was like, I don't know. This was like during COVID. You know, uh, during COVID, a lot of people started making content. It felt very kind of like uh, 2010s where people were losing jobs because of the market crash and stuff. So people were just like, I'm going to try new things. 2020 was the exact same vibe where people were going in and just create. And there was this girl who was doing React content and she was like very clearly, um, I would say similar to a lot of people we know who just don't like Mathis didn't has never seen any movies, right? And so mm. she's going through this process of watching movies the first time, and it was very sweet to watch her. She clearly was just doing it by herself, right? And the curse that you're talking about, I think, is a curse that a lot of YouTubers and, and streamers and people have, especially in entertainment in general, where, like, as they explode and become bigger and bigger and bigger, the content loses, like, whatever made it special to begin with. The zest. Yeah. And, and and watching her get more and more popular. Like I'm I was watching her where there's like 15 people watching these videos. And I was like, man, this is so much fun to watch. And then it got better and better and better quality and more so and she got more and more views. And I was like, I'm so proud of her. But then, you know, I like got caught up in life and then came back and watched the thing and I was like, this is not the same person. Like it almost feels like these reactions are forced and fake. The edits are like clearly an editor is editing it now. There's like a different vibe. And I was like, they got self aware. Yeah. They got, yeah, they started like, thinking about sucks. success. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and what, what made it even worse is that it clearly became about the money because the edits were done in a way as not to lose out on income. Right. Instead of when their first videos was like her just like reacting to shit, and it was very clear she was doing it for fun. And then at a certain point, it just changed. And I'm like, Man, the magic's gone. That sucks. That, and th and what sucks about it is knowing that that is absolutely something that someone has thought about me. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, absolutely well, I, someone said that about me. I was literally going to say it's it's a funny topic for us specifically to be talking about because, like, absolute 100% there are people out there who have had that exact conversation about us at some point. Absolutely, like, oh, yeah, there's this yeah. YouTuber that I used to love. Um, but they've changed, man. Or like, you know, they, they, sometimes we, we're self-aware about some of it, but we're not self-aware about enough of it. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like I, I think for sure in the past I have done stuff that has done really well, but I'm not 
I'm not sure what it is that made it do well. Yes. Yes. 100. You know? And then yes. you try to figure out like, Just okay. Reach for it. Yeah. Yeah, like what was it that made this work? And then you wind up veering further and further away from what the vibe was originally, right? It's like trying to chase that. Um, it's really fun. It's really funny. It's really funny to think about that. Like, obviously, no, no, like when you're talking about things that you like in your life, right? You're never like, wow, like, I really liked what they were doing. And then like, I loved how like when they got famous, they like just dropped that and tried to get famous. Right. But that's like what being an influencer is like, if you're, yeah, sure. especially if you're not like set, you know what I mean? Like, like after a while, you guys, especially like you guys have been doing this longer than I've, I've been doing it even by like a little bit. And like, you guys have that sort of, it's like how beard bros is like, kind of grandfathered in even though the times have moved on like nobody mm. watches let's play content in that way anymore everybody watches streamers now but like somehow because we've been doing it you like fit into the hole that you're in yeah but uh you know i don't know like i feel like i feel like uh if you don't make it through that first bit of self-awareness you will never be legit i think i don't know i think you kind of like either decide whether you're going to be like an MMO player who plays YouTube or you're going to be like a person who like whether or not YouTube collapses will be able to do the exact same job. I honestly think there's a lot of um like boy this is the deep dive into the psyche of a YouTuber but like <laughs> if you create content, right? And you do it from a place of love and you're starting out and you have no intention of like, I'm going to explode and be big. I'm just creating because I love to create. I'm a creator. And you make stuff. I see this all the time. It does not matter what you create. I see this all the time on YouTube. Watching people become successful, a thing happens where you're creating something you love and then you start to get paid for it and you're being paid a lot for it. And watching people who make this money, almost, I don't want to say it's laziness. But it's like something happens to you. And I know that I've been there where it's like suddenly you're making money doing a thing you love and the money's coming in and it feels easy. And suddenly you're just like, hell yeah, man, I'm going to take like two weeks off. And then like you start to get in this weird thing where your content becomes kind of like stale and you're doing the same thing because it's been making you money. So you keep doing the same thing over and over and over again. And mm -hmm. you're like, it's going to work. But then your audience is like, You've done this like 15 times. You're phoning it in, bro. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But you're like, but that's what you want. The formula says you want that. So I'm going to keep making you that. Plus, it's like super easy for me. And so then you get complacent with it. But then as you go on, the more you try to change up, the, the audience is like, well, we didn't like that. Or like, well, you told me to change. It's like, well, we didn't like. So it's this weird thing where you hit a point where you're like, I've done it. I'm successful. And but the maintaining of that is like a whole thing that I don't like. Watching what people need to do to maintain success as a content creator is what leads you down the path of like, we're going to end up in a forest and see a dead body. Like that's where like it keep, you keep having to like one up yourself to the point where it becomes unsustainable. Like suddenly you're Mr. Beasting it through the world. Where you're just like this week, we're giving away $60 million. Like what, what the hell's happening over there? It's that kind of vibe where you just have to keep getting bigger and bigger and crazier and crazier in order to keep people from realizing that like, oh, this is the same shit. This is like the closest like that I've ever felt we've gotten to the core of this problem in a conversation on a microphone. Like I've had this conversation a million times, like on just chatting type podcasts. Sure. I feel like we're really getting to the center of what makes this like, it, it's like simultaneously the thing that makes it into like, trash tv sort of and all that you can like watch forever like whatever quality about kitchen nightmares made me watch it so many times that i know every single word of the entire show like that thought process creates that feeling also but it also mm. creates that sort of like feeling that makes you get away from your work and make you like seduces you into being a like a producer rather like like when you're alone you're like producing yourself rather than like creating which is kind of a kind of there's, a weird vibe there's something that i think in all honesty is is most people I, I don't know most people get there 
But I feel like most people who have some form of success eventually have to come to terms with the fact that like this is it. You know what I mean? Like so Yes. There's I as someone who's been doing this for 15 years now, I am doing great. Life is good. Thank you all so much. Um but I've watched people come out of the blue and become so much more successful than me in mm -hmm. everything they do. Just like explode and be so good and take the world over by storm. And it's like, okay, well, I'm not that. Like that kid's 22 and that kid is a handsome dude. He's going to live his best life. Like that is not a thing I will achieve. And so it's I, 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 I think that that affects people as well where you see like all these people doing it better than you and easier than you. And you're like, why can't I do that shit? Like, why are they, how are they good at this? Right. And somehow, some way, I think I lucked out and that no matter what I see of the internet, I got this wacky ass dude named Crendor who decided F it. I don't care about all of that. I'm going to wake up afternoon <laughs> I'm going to stream for like two hours a day and I'm going to live my life and be satisfied. And that shit, like it's perspective changing because you realize yeah. that like, look, yeah, I mean, you don't need all of that. Like, and you shouldn't be stressed to like, be happy with what you, it's like, it's a weird vibe, but it's also incredibly important to think about when you think about this ecosystem of entertainment, because at the end of the day, you're, you're there's always gonna be someone better than you. And you can never compare it to that person. And it's just, you're going to want to though. You're going to sit there and be like, well, why can't I do that? Like, what about my content? Well, how do I fix that? What do I make this better? That person has, you know, 3,000 people watching this stream. Well, I don't have 3,000. I would love 3,000. How do I get there? And you think about that constantly because you're always like, what do I do to improve? At least you should be thinking what I do to improve. But like, at some point you have to realize it's, it's all subjective. Everyone's going to enjoy entertainment a different way. And sometimes you need to appreciate that, like anyone showed up to watch your stuff at all. And it's real, it's yes. real perspective changing. And I feel like that's something people need. I don't want to say everyone needs a loss, but like if you're successful, it helps to be brought down a peg a little bit. So you're like, okay, I need to refocus my entire perspective because otherwise I'd just be chasing success and that ruins you. As like a performer and 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 a entertainer. I mean all you should be Yep. Yeah. Sorry. I was gonna say all you should be chasing is creative satisfaction and a like sustainable system. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how big it is. It doesn't matter like if you're a creator, right? Like the whole mm -hmm. point is you like to create because you wanna make shit. Like you're not just like a fame machine. You're like somebody who makes something or does something that you like, be it hosting or like commentating or whatever like hobbyist you are like maybe you're a pro card player or maybe you're a you know poker player like i don't know like whatever you are and mm -hmm. and uh like you want to do that so you want to set up a situation where you can do that right and uh it's like it's like very very simple to understand like outside of the context of like i got to be famous to do this like I want to just create an engine for myself where I can do the thing that I love. That's who I'm always like talking shit on when I'm bitter is people who like, Oh, I just like planned. I just like planned what I wanted to do. And I executed my goals. And now I just like live my life doing exactly what I want, which like, you know, outside of the sound of my bitter voice is like, you know, the right way to do it. So I don't know. Like, I feel like, I feel like if you're absolutely not sipping the poison, you are not, caring about your numbers you should think about your channels as your resume and you know i try to step so far away from i try to step so far away from looking at the numbers being important to me mm -hmm. that like i don't know like i'm 36 now i started doing this when i was like 22 years old or something like that like you know i don't know my priorities are changing and i just think like we all just want to hang out and like eat some, eat some beef. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like we all just want to <laughs> yeah. hang out and like be what ourselves. Full that circle we like. conversation. <laughs> but seriously. Like, like that's what beef should be is like inviting somebody over to hang out. Uh, yeah. But like, honestly, like we're just trying to get to that point where we can wake up and not be stressed out. Right. This is, we're all living in the same 
country, right? Like, like, like uh, we're all living in the same world where mm. shit's going bad every single day. Like, are you seriously like not satisfied with your growth right now? Like, maybe, maybe we can just figure out a way that you can get your afford your your uh, burger money and uh, like hang out, and you're good, and you can sleep, and you don't need to be rich. You can just be comfy. That's that's how I feel. That's how I feel, and like. Part of that is creative comfort, and part of that is physical, <laughs> literal, happy, whatever. You know, that's yeah. the vibe. Yeah, because, like, even, you know, even just trying to chase the algorithm, figure out when to make posts, like, all of that shit, it just deteriorates your mental health so much. Because, like, like, like Jesse was saying, it's so easy to look at somebody who's suddenly doing really well and be like, it's so easy for you, isn't it? Yeah, but like, again, oh, yeah, much like, yeah. much like we just said on the back end, you have no idea what's going on with people's content. You don't, you don't know all of the stuff that they're engaging with and trying to perfect and the numbers they're looking at and the way they're analyzing their content. You don't, you're not in their head and you're not behind the curtain for them. Right. And likely they're, the stuff that we're seeing is like, that's really simple, fun content. They really crushed it there. Like, man, they're able to do this like really easy thing and pull huge numbers and like, fuck, why didn't I think of that? Right. But potentially they're also stressed as fuck <laughs> the same way that we've all yes. been stressed out about analytics and shit. Um, and I, I totally agree. And I do think um, uh, to what, you were saying, Alex, I do think that there's an aspect to it as well of like if when you've been making stuff for long enough, when you've been in the space for a while and also just like just aging in general. It's tiring. Yeah, I think I think you do hit a point where you're like, am I making enough to to have the, a comfortable version of the life that I want? Then, yeah. then maybe the best thing for me and my brain is to try to just maintain that and then make, you know, and then actually enjoy the time that I have and, and put that time into stuff that isn't this, <laughs> you know? I mean, one of the things that I think also we don't think about as you two, I think it's safe to say the three of us were not raised uh, in a wealthy family. We weren't like right. rich kids. <laughs> yeah. No. One of the no, things no. I've realized uh, uh, being in this space is that um, a lot of the time I'll see someone be very successful. And I'm like, how the hell do they have the time and the energy to do all this stuff? And they're like, oh, well, I have an entire team. I'm like, wow, you're very like your channel just started. You have like this huge team. I'm like, yeah, no, we don't. I have slowly come to realize, uh, and this might be a spoiler to everyone out there. I would say 90% of this industry is the children of rich people. I'm just going to put it out there. There are a lot of rich kids who do YouTube and streaming and stuff. It's wild. And it's all so, like suddenly you'll discover, oh, wait, you're the son of this like wealthy industrialist. You're like, what? Yeah. It happens yeah. frequently, dude. It's wild to me. It's funny. Like, it's funny. Like, like, I, I, don't, I don't know if it's 90%, but like it feels like is, it. The thing that is funny about that system, too, for me, is, like, it's either somebody like that who's, like, a rich person's, like, like, you can be, if you can afford, like, when I started doing game reviews, I'm not going to say the website just because I'm not trying to start beef, but when I started writing in this industry, I would, like, make $15 flat rate to make, like, an article, right? Like, that's crazy, first of all. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, play a game and write it, and then and write the review, 15 bucks. Like, that's insane. But, uh, like, I don't know, like, there's rich people who are able to have the job, and then there's people who live like rats who shouldn't be working the job. Those are the two types of people that work for YouTubers. And YouTubers typically, unless they're already rich business people who have like money from something else that they're doing, they just want the job done. They have no creative impulse behind it. They usually just hire the cheapest person. So now 
automatically you got like this like pseudo sweatshop that you've created and half the people there think that they're in the big leagues and don't realize they're not and they have no skills and you're like mad at them all the time and you're putting out shit work and the other people are like slowly becoming financially dependent on you in a way where they all are like willing to live in a house together or they're all willing to do these subhuman things because they think that they think that that's what you have to do. And they believe that coming down the pipe is like becoming Mr. Beast. Right. Yeah. And so I mean, like, it, yeah, there's an, there's an interesting thing. Like I don't. So when I say that they're like rich, I'm not saying that the people who were running, sh like there's a difference in what you can produce when money isn't a concern is what I'm getting at. Yes. Like there is someone who is producing, you're like, wow, everything they do is so unique and different when you don't have to work. Like, Going back to what I was saying is when you find a thing and people stick to it because it's making them money, they don't have to do that. They can get weird and creative and, and change up what they're doing because like the house is paid for or the rent's paid for, or they like, it isn't like, if it doesn't work out, I can just go home yeah. like that kind of thing. And there's a lot of people that's not an option for, and to have that is like, when you don't have that, you, you know, it's, it's the difference is huge. And I think that that's one of those things that I think changes the ecosystem a lot is that you can be creative and, and it, it goes back to that same thing where it's like, you know, a lot of the uh, arts in general are the children of wealthy because like very much like ancient uh, Greece, you would have time to like philosophize because you weren't stressing out about like, right. You know, how am I going to make money today? They, you, you probably you didn't know. even know how to read. You know what I mean? There's yeah. probably a lot less to fucking worry about. You probably just remembered yeah. shit. Because you, your mind was like peaceful, mm, and there was and not pictures of shit that you need to buy everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's one yeah. of those things that I think is it's fascinating, but it's also like, okay, I get it. I understand. Uh, I understand that it's a uh, Dodger. Nope, out, out. Dodger left. She was like, "They're still talking about it." I'm out. I gotta go. Look, hey everyone. Hi, Jesse Cox here. Hey, hey. Do you know that Dodger secretly is? Part of the elite. Oh, hey. Oh, oh, hey. 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 Oh, my God. So great Ow. to see you. Wow. Uh, we were talking just talking about life. Yeah, we were just talking about, you know, how it gets. You know? We're mm -hmm. just talking about how it gets, man. Yeah. But that's the real shit. That's actually the real shit right there. Like, legitimately... Oh, the chat just doesn't like it. You're muted. Um, no, I'm not, chat. Don't lie. Look at this. Every single person in this chat. Okay. Um, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, the thing, that's, the thing that's crazy is, like, the thing that's crazy is, like, nobody even knows why they're here anymore. Like, think about being a newspaper, like, intern in like 1985 okay mm -hmm. like you have been reading your whole life how to get the job that you want you've been preparing your whole life to get the job you want nothing occurs in your life that stops you from this you get like straight a's you learn how the newspaper industry works you obsess over it like and it's crazy because like in japan or something like that as as hardcore as their work culture is people still think like this you know in in japan there's like still like a spirit of pride that makes everybody clean up after themselves. Like people still have context for what they're doing in America. Right. A lot of the time you don't like, there's definitely still the establishment and there's still like these sort of, uh, you know, certificated sort of positions where you really do have to be someone. And, you know, if you look at outsider art and you look at insider art, like, you know, Insider art is like a guy who's in the art scene and goes to art gallery openings and talks to other artists all the time and gets in beefs with the art critics. And then there's outsider art, which is like a dude who like lives on the side of the freeway on the way to Vegas who makes shit out of like his own poop and you can like go see it for five bucks. Like, we're the poop guy. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, we're, we're the poop guy. We don't know what we're doing. We don't have any sort of system behind us. We've had to make... True. Everything that we're doing is to pretend like we're not the poop guy when really we're just the poop guy. You know That's what I mean? All, I have an office to pretend I'm not the poop guy. Yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. Uh, you're right. 
I do think I would say that uh, yeah. We've we've talked about this a little bit before on on past episodes of Geek Enders, but about um how early YouTube there was this vibe of like if I do well enough at YouTube, eventually I'll be on TV or eventually yes. I'll be in a movie. Yes. And and now for a lot of us it's like no, it's actually better for me probably to just stay on YouTube. But then like but then what what direction are you going in? Where do you go from? You don't, you don't, what's, what's the next thing? You don't There's have no a structure. Next thing. There's no system. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's just, well, you gotta I mean, shape that poop a little better. I guess Basically. I'll let you know. Yeah. Keep, yeah, truthfully, poop. truthfully, we're that. Like if you are a 20 year old who is getting into YouTube or content creation or TikTok, whatever, we're that like in a few years, we're going to be the, the end game of this, of what, whatever we do, that's what the end game will look like. Yeah. We're going to we be, like be the older ones adults who set who did the standard. This. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we were, the, we're, we are literally like, we're like wave two basically. And yeah. wave one, most of them, most of wave one of internet burnout. There's a few who are still doing stuff and a few who made, like got their bag and quit. But like, most of them gone, gone. And I think because th that was like, you were saying Dodger, they were all trying to be on TV. I think we wave two. We were the ones who were like, no, this is it. This is what we're trying to do. Mm. And we'll be the first people that whatever happens, we're going to be the exit strategy. People are gonna be like, well, this is what they did. How did they do it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and when really, we're not we don't know. Worth... Yeah. It just says like, a lot about us, it. Let us get shattered on the on the windshield of of uh, progress, you know. Yeah, I guess. Like I don't know. Like it's just the the point is, and I think chat's maybe missing my point with the poop guy. I think like <laughs> the the thing I'm the thing I'm the thing I'm saying is that we are all just make, making it up. Like there yeah. are jobs where you're not making it up, and like you know, if you work at MGM Studios or you work at Warner Brothers you work at the Los Angeles times, like there are institutions out there, but the growth of us and our industry and these unskilled people getting put into these positions because they'll do it cheaper than the skilled people. And then, you know, we get more views than a movie or whatever, like that's changing the way that things are done all the way around. And people are less reliant on their expertise in general. And now, you know, people come and do things like I was watching, um, hot ones. You guys ever watch that show? Yeah, I love well, that no, show. What's the, what, what is that? Yeah, <laughs> I was watching. I was watching Hot Ones, and it was Hugh Jackman, the brand Ryan new Reynolds. one, and Ryan oh, Reynolds. Hugh Jackman. Yeah, yeah. Hugh Jackman. Yeah. He mm -hmm. actually has a scary like I'm old, but I want to look young smile now, where he's like every time he laughs. Uh, but uh, here's what I'm going to say about How dare you? That's you. <laughs> How dare you? He was. He was. He was. He was bringing it. He was just really scared. Uh, but. Uh, <laughs> Australian and Canadian together on Hot Ones, that's like the wuss mouth. Like, the, those are the two wussest mouth countries that there are. At least, was like, Indian people hilarious. live in England. It yeah. was funny watching Hugh Jackman lose his, like, that man cannot eat hot food. It's, I'm gonna, you know what? Here's, all right, look, I'm gonna say something that probably is gonna start a beef with someone. When like I you're discover, gonna invite them over and feed them beef. Yes. As we've established, this is a better like, version of beefing. If Delicious we're hanging beefing. out, like if we're hanging out and we're we're like gelling, we're good buds. If I discover you can't handle hot food, dude, something changes about the relationship. Oh There's my like God. a dynamic that changes where I'm like, are you a little bitch? Is that what you I'm saying? You need right? to have spicy beef. I, I never I never judge anybody for their for their Oh, for their I do. Spice I'm like, tolerance. Oh, me neither. But it you is inconvenient. It is inconvenient sometimes <laughs> inconvenient. as a spicy as a, as a spice man. I, it's only uh, it's only inconvenient to me if I'm in a position where I am cooking for someone. Yes, yes, because exactly. I have to remind myself. So my sister, I love her very much. I feel like I need to say that first. I, I adore my sister. She thinks pepper is too spicy. Pepper. So pepper. So. Okay. When I, when I stay with her, whenever I stay with people, I try to like cook something, you know, if I'm, if I'm like staying over and stuff. And I always have to remind myself like, be gentle. 
Yeah. Be gentle with the, the with the spice cabinet, dude. Be, don't just start All throwing shit in there willy nilly. Uh, let me have this. I get yes. to feel better than you because I can handle spice, and you're a weak little baby boy, a weak <laughs> little tiny baby boy. And I'm like over here with the biggest dong that ever existed, like just flaunting my like coolness. You and you're like, oh, it's so chili spicy. dong. Yeah, got that oh no, I feel better. Than, what I'm saying dong. is. I feel Chili better size. than you. What do they call him? I feel yeah. like I'm a better person than you. Is what I'm saying. I get it. I yeah. get it. Yeah. I just like. I, I guess like, somehow I conquered like, humanity. Yeah. I feel like spicy food is like the closest you can get to being high without like taking drugs. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> sure. I the reason the reason chat. I brought up the the reason <laughs> I brought up this this uh, episode of the Hot Ones show is yeah. because they asked uh, Sean Evans asked Ryan Reynolds something about like what do you think it is that makes like, why, why is Deadpool and Wolverine, like, special, right? And I haven't seen the movie. Don't, don't spoil it. I'm going to go see it tomorrow. But, but uh, he was like, you know, it's, it's, it was literally Ryan Reynolds seriously talking about going, you know, I find that, like, audiences, like, they really need, like, I, like so many people are focused on the spectacle, the insane, like, visuals, um, but that's all pretty soulless, like, what I did, and he's saying it like it's like novels. He's like, I focused on like the relationships between the characters and like kind of just like, you know, I find people really like a good story in their movie and like stuff like that. And he was not being ironic. He was like, right. he was not being ironic. He was talking in 2024 in a world where like most movies do not consider those things when they come out. Like being a good movie is like secondary to being a good Product, spectacle right right yeah i worked on a series of movies uh over covid i i do a lot of like consulting work from time to time on like bigger brands and i did a big uh i did a big there's a series of movies that's like an animated series of movies that's like one of the big franchises like minions but it's not minions mm, and it's okay, okay okay and i and i did the advertising for five movies at once right and uh that's like how they're thinking about it. They're thinking about like this. There's only three of these movies out, by the way. And there were maybe two okay. out when I started doing the campaign, maybe one out when I started doing the campaign because they started to design the franchise. So like, that's where they're at. Just so you know, that's where the people making the big stuff are at. Right. And right. Uh, it's interesting that it's interesting that making good shit is like starting to become fringe. And it's funny because people react to stuff that's good the same way they always have like Dune comes out. And people are literally like, oh, dude, I went to the theater and when I watched the movie, I liked it. <laughs> They're like, dude, like it was actually good. Like I saw the movie and I watched the movie and it was good. They said, I'm like, ape. Yeah, I'm just saying like. Jesse looked sad just then. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm not sad. I'm slowly. <sighs> Y'all, I just want to let you know. One of my true joys in life is just like rage baiting chat and it it's easy. And I'm like a little disappointed with how easy it was. I like, I said you were, you suck cause you couldn't handle spicy food. And chat was like, how dare you? I'm like, <laughs> I just want to say it's one of the few joys I have left in this world. Let me have this. He's you marinating know? in a little tub of au jus over there. He's got a little, yeah. he's got a little dippy. He's a little French dip over there. I'm doing he's the great. You know when you get it where they dip it first and then they wrap it? That's Jesse. Oh, yeah. I'm like dripping with, with my He's that my Italian juices. beef. He's the yeah, bear. Yeah, I'm He's dripping the... with my own juices over I here. I got Jesse at the bear yeah. Uh, restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think it's called the bear. I've seen only season one. I, I know the show is called the, the bear. bear restaurant. Yeah. 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 I haven't seen season three yet. I loved season one and two, though. Saw the first season. Very good. But yeah, like, I don't know. Uh, I just feel like it's funny that making good shit and trying your best is like novel. That's where we're at now. That's where, yeah. that's where, that's where paying the cheapest person and the most agreeable person with, who can do the job will get you is an, is an entire industry of people who suck. Uh, yeah. Hey. 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 Um, what video games have you been playing this week? Brother. Does it have to be new? No, it's just I'm asking no. what you've been playing. Uh, I... Shoot Megami Tensei 5. 
<laughs> Let me tell you something about Shimigami Tensei Five. It's a little yes. different now. It's called Vengeance. Uh, no, I actually I I beat that game like this year, so I feel weird like playing the new one already doing it again <laughs> yeah, but i'm yeah. definitely going i'm definitely going to i play every shimigami tensei game but but uh the game i've been playing lately is mm -hmm. called dragons or dragon marked for death have you played this what? game no so do you know what inti creates is they made like the Mega Man zero games they make uh what's it called azure striker gunvolt they oh. make the they make the little it's the it's the mighty number no. nine guy before he left to make mighty number no. nine. They're like right. the the other Capcom, basically. They're like like a spin-off Capcom company. Dragon Mark for Death is like the same controls as like a Mega Man Zero game or something like that. Uh, and there's like a couple classes, but the game loop is Monster Hunter. So like okay. you can you can like play it with friends. And I actually bought more copies of this on physical because I have so much fun playing this game with people sometimes. I've had it for a couple of years. And uh you can like team up, fight the levels, like get gear. It's literally Monster Hunter, but with the with the with the like pixel art gameplay of Mega Man. It has sick ass music. It's really fun, it's really hard. Um and I've been playing the shit out of it. I've also been playing the new Super Monkey Ball, mm -hmm. uh, Banana Rumble, which is like, I'm, I'm going to go deep. Like, look, I like, I'm an asshole, okay? I'm a video game hipster. I, I'll yeah. say it. I'll say it. I'll, I'm that guy. Like, the way that I was in my early 20s about music, I'm there with, with games right now. And as a, as a connoisseur of Super Monkey Ball, this recent Super Monkey Ball, to me, feels like the most actual new Super Monkey Ball game in like 15 years. It feels so good. It's so fun. They added a spin dash to the game, and I can make my little monkey look like a little Hawaiian shirt wearing, sandals wearing, little guy in his little ball. It's good yeah. vibes. That Super Monkey cute. Ball, Banana Rumble. There's Get something right. incredibly fun about, like, dude, the new Super Monkey Ball, though, bro. Like, it's just, it slaps. it'd be like if you came out and you were like, guys. The new Glover is mind blowing, dude. It's <laughs> oh, mind -blowing. like it's the same level. Okay, have you fucking played Super Monkey Ball? It's way better than fucking Glover. There are many <laughs> sequels to Super Monkey Ball. Even the fucking Game Boy Advance Super Monkey Ball is better than Glover. I've never played a Super Monkey Ball game. You would love it. You would love it. Anyone What's the would genre? love it. You tilt the level, and the ball rolls around, and it's like. You have to kind of like, there's not a lot of railings. Mm. There's like tracks. You got to get like in, in Banana Rumble, I'm enjoying the like minimum banana challenge on each level, getting the golden banana, which is like a little harder to get on each level. And then you get to the exit and it's all physics based. And you can like pop your little guy by like hitting him off this corner and getting him this way. It's real fun. Real fun. It's a Sega game. Mm. Is, this is what 3D Sonic should have been from the beginning is Super Monkey Ball. <laughs> so good. So, so, so good. Dang. It's, a, um, it's an all-timer. An all-timer? Seriously. Damn. Um, last week, Jesse suggested the operator to everybody. Um, and so I played that this week. It, it was relatively short. It was like four and a half hours for me. N not even a little over four hours. Um, and uh, what Jesse pitched is exactly what the game is. It's like legally distinct FBI called the FDI. Um, you are the guy in the chair. You're an operator. You're somebody who has been hired to basically be like um, the person behind the curtain for an agent that is on a scene, active duty, right? Like they, oh, they are fun. somewhere. They are assigned to you. They call you up and they say, hey, um, I, uh, I'm, you know, currently in a lab with this, that, and the other. Do we have proof? If I send you over these files that I found, can you tell me who's in like this picture or can we figure out like who this guy is? Right. So you're like, you're analyzing footage. Um, you're going through paperwork. You're, uh, looking up people's names and databases and cars and like all kinds of stuff. Um, it's very fun and it, I think is like the perfect length. Um, I would love for them to make another one if I'm being totally honest. Uh, but 
I, I think they did what they wanted to do with the game, and it's definitely a Jesse game. I don't know if you've played the whole thing, Jesse. I'm uh, sponsored by them, so let me just say for the record, um, it's awesome. It's a very Jesse <laughs> game, but also hashtag sponsored. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> it is, so like, for Alex, imagine you're playing, you're like the guy behind, you know, you're the, the dude in the chair, you're doing the thing, and they're like, yeah, we yeah. need you to track this information. And as you go through it, you start getting weird clues. Like, one of the missions literally is like, we found this image, and it looks like a UFO. Like, that kind of thing. And eventually becomes like, wait, what is happening right now? It's that yeah. kind of vibe. Very cool stuff. I would love that with, like, L.A. Noir, like, open world sandbox kind of game. Like, those things mixed together would be really cool. You are entirely on a computer in this game. Yeah. You, the whole yeah. interface of the of the game is like you sitting at a desk at your computer. And You're so literally Chloe for Jack Bauer. Mm -hmm. I love that. He's like, Chloe, I need you to look up. You're Autocon. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're sitting there. You're typing in the stuff. You're doing the things. You'll like get an image and you'll highlight parts of the image and you'll do the like enhance. Enhance again. What is that license plate? Give me the right angle. Like that kind of stuff. That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. it's, I love uh, that. It's great. Yeah. Super fun. Yeah. Very fun. Dodgers right, exactly very Jesse did. game. Very yeah. Jesse game. Yeah. Uh once yeah, once I started connecting things together, I was like, hmm. I, I don't know if Jesse wound up playing this whole thing, but I bet uh I bet awesome. he loved it. Um I love that moment of like, I see. You said a little bit. Yeah, you I get it. Now. Bastards. I get yeah. it now. You little fuckers. I get it. <laughs> yeah. And then last week, Jesse challenged me. He said that I should play a game that was either an FPS looter shooter mm -hmm. or a mm -hmm. horror game. Ooh, and I said, you all do. and I said, what if I found a game that was all of those? And so I talked with my chat for a while and they were like, you know what? You should try playing Warframe, um, okay. which has been out forever. Uh, yeah. But a lot of people are getting back into it right now. They just had their convention and stuff it's like the anti-destiny um, yeah yeah and i've i've never played it before i had seen you know like over the shoulder style i had seen sam play it so from my perspective it was um, oddly enough another game where you're called the operator weird um i had from from my perspective it was all right so this game you you're a guy in a cool suit of armor right that's uh that was pretty much yeah yeah, Basically, you look like a Final Fantasy wall. You look like a wall from the game Final <laughs> Fantasy, but you're a guy. Um, apparently, there are missions, or at least a series of missions that are that are like kind of body horror y. So they were like, it counts, it counts, it counts, it counts. There's there's horror stuff in there. Vibes, um, vibes, vibes, vibes. But it's also uh, a little bit like Final Fantasy fourteen, where everyone says, yeah, the game itself is super fun. Um, the story doesn't really pop off until about 80 hours in. <laughs> and I was like, mm, that sounds right. Okay, sure. So I played some of that literally today before Geek Enders. And um, it's great. It's super fun. Uh, mm. it, de it definitely has the looter shooter vibes. It's kind of like um, uh, Deep Rock Galactic, where it's like mission based. You are on your little ship, and then you say, yeah, I want to go do this mission. Um, you do the mission. If you explore enough, you find all kinds of stuff to like break and and loot and whatever. Um, and uh, people were saying the more that you play and the more that you upgrade your Warframe, your suit of armor thing, um, the faster you can do these missions. So currently, I'm just kind of like do 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 do. I hit a guy, I stab a guy, I zap a guy, right, and then I get <laughs> some stuff from the chest and then I go, I go, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. you get you get like faster and faster and faster and faster because you just keep upgrading stuff and eventually you're doing these missions in like a couple of minutes, you know? Um, but that. currently it's, it's really fun and uh, it's been interesting because the game has been out for so long. Um, most people have no idea what the like new player experience is like. Uh, so I'm here to tell you, uh, it's great. Yeah, I'm I'm really enjoying it. I think I'm about to do like the last sort of tutorial-ish mission, but the tutorial doesn't really feel like a tutorial. It's just like some fun starting missions to be like you're you certainly are a guy in a Warframe and doing stuff, you know. Yes, you are. Um yes, you are, dude. Good job. I mean, now they got butts, and so I'm interested. 
That game is like is that when new? he goes through the the um the whole life in Star Trek. Like Warframe is like, oh, I can just see my entire life where I play Warframe instead of like doing the other things that I do in my life, where I just like live my whole life never paying another dollar for a video game and I just <laughs> play warframe and i bet you that that life is so nice and so peaceful and so simple um mm. and then and then i wake up and i'm here and i'm right. and i'm playing super monkey ball again you know like <laughs> i don't know like I, I i love i love warf i love i love the idea of warframe i it's just so intimidating mm. so intimidating uh, everyone in chat's telling me that it's always had butts yes but i've only been marketed butts recently and that i think is the difference i think they've gotten full butt and i'm here for it Final i'm Fantasy. here for Final Fantasy 16 walls, but with like a big honking juicy with a yeah, a big yeah. butt. But Don speaking yeah. of Final Fantasy, um yep. I finally sat down to start doing Final Fantasy 14's newest expansion. Yep. Dodger, I'm not gonna spoil things for you because I know you'll Thank play. You. Yeah, I have done it. But there's some yet. things I definitely like want to talk about. Okay. So feel free to ignore me if you want. But um I won't spoil big story stuff. So like Okay. Sitting down to this expansion, so Final Fantasy XIV, like, I'm going to try and explain this the best way I can, because I know Alex doesn't play, and there are many of you out there who don't, but like, we just came off of a big 10-year-long arc that ended in the most Final Fantasy way possible with literally, like, taking on the physical manifestation of the concept of despair, right? Like, that's where we just came from. We went and, like, went to the universe. So... We're on the universe, we do this stuff, we come back, we're back on our planet, and we're like, hey man, what now? And what they did, they did a thing that was, I think, very dangerous and scary for a lot of MMOs, which was, hey, we're starting over. But how do you start over yeah. in an like how do you start over in an MMO? What is the what is the what is the way you do that? And so the way they decided to do it is interesting in a sort of storytelling way that I absolutely fundamentally believe. Um, and I have muted everything in re relationship to this game. Yeah. Everything. Muted everything. And um, and I'll do a spoiler finger. I'll keep, I'll keep the spoiler finger up for this. Um, they went in and they said, hey, we're going to make this a shonen anime where you are not the main character anymore. Which is a fascinating way to do this, but is also like, I, I believe based on what people like in chat are saying, I feel like this is one of those things that is very divisive because your character is like the dude hanging out with another character who's clearly just like monkey D. Luffy. Like a Luffy ass character and Baku you are simulated. just there. Yeah. Like you're there for the ride. And it's interesting that the way they're like, so the way they've decided to do this is so like Alex, if you go to the end of the universe and you defeat everyone and you're the hero of the world, when you come back, you are like the most powerful person who ever lived. And so what this expansion does brilliantly, I think uh, I'm not even halfway through. Everyone in the new world that you go to, the new continent, no one has any idea who you are. They literally don't know a damn thing about you. And when you show up, they're like, I'll kick your ass, you piece of shit. But you know, you, the player, know, the character knows, everyone knows, like, I could end you right now. I'm somebody. And, yeah. Yeah. And it's fascinating because all the choices that are happening, you're basically like the mentor for a character now. And so everything you do is you are like just sitting back, like you're going to handle this or do you want me? And they're like, no, I'll do it. Don't worry. Like, okay, sure. And so you just sit there and, and watch stuff happen. And sometimes you play, but like there's one scene dude early on where uh, the, one of the bad guys is like, I'll kill you. And, I, and he's threatening your friend and your character just like slow walks to them and everyone's like oh shit and it's very clear that like i could end this man right now and they're like no 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 don't do that and you're like okay like it is what a strange what a strange convention for an entire yes. game i'm sure that they'll drop that in like the next one but that's so interesting 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like it feels divisive because you're no longer the main character. And more importantly, you could – everyone, all the villains, they pretend like they're tough as shit, but you could literally just like end Kill them. them. Yeah. And But you don't. And so I'm like, oh, this is going to piss people off. Like I know this is going to piss people off. And so I, I'm I'm very curious. I don't know what's going to happen with it, but – We'll see. Well, but it's like Inter it's interesting. Like it's interesting, like the idea of starting a character right now. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. Oh yeah. I wonder how. I wonder how different it is. Well, they. I mean, and that's the thing. I think that is. Uh, whoop. That's the thing. I think is interesting about um, what Yoshida and the team has said. Uh, Duke's Alex was asking what it would be like starting a character right now. Oh. Mm. And what's interesting is I think that. They've said multiple times is they want you to treat it like an RPG, not an MMORPG. So literally nice. start from the beginning, play the story. See don't stress trying to like catch up with your friends Back. and blow through it because yeah. they want it to be a, an adventure you go on. So you're not going to start in the new stuff. Like you will experience everything unless you pay for it. In which case, I guess you don't care about the story anyway. So why would it matter to you what happens? Right. 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 That's sick. That's yeah. actually sick. I, you know, the one thing I, from the outside, as somebody who's played 15 other Final Fantasy games besides this one, like, it just feels so loving. Like, the, the thing that I get from it from the outside is that everybody who plays it feels very loved by the people who make this game, which I, which I really, I really like that. That's like the opposite of like what it is to be like the fan of most things, which I think is really cool. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's like, such a different vibe from where it started now that yeah i'm i i can't wait to to unmute the world of final fantasy 14 and see what people are saying because yeah it's an, it's a, the whole thing's interesting in a way that is unexpected and so um i haven't determined whether it's awesome or like a complete miss you know what i mean like it's like <laughs> yes, that, wow we're best place doing, to be yeah That's we're doing something totally different to and i'm like okay but it's definitely it. It is a vibe of like a dangerous. Where I mean, just it's not done. Like you don't right. do that a lot in gaming, where it's like we're starting over. Like it just doesn't happen very often. And so when it does, there's always a risk. And I I'm curious to see like where they take it. But yeah, interesting interesting adventure so far. Exciting. I love an interesting yeah. adventure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, also playing a game called Terrascape. Yeah. Um, Terrascape is a game where if you imagine the, it's like a grid system. And I mentioned this last time, but I've been playing it a bunch. I think I mentioned it last time. I'm playing it a bunch and I like, I'm obsessed with it. Um, imagine a kingdom creation game, except it's card based. And you have a little, like you create an island. You're not fighting anyone. You're not doing anything. It's more of a puzzle. And so you start out with your one deck of cards and you can place either at the beginning, it's either you can do um, food or housing. And so you're like, all right, I'll do food. And so you put down, you put down your castle and then you get food cards. And at the start, it's only, uh, you know, like wheat maybe. And so you're like, okay, well, how do I put down enough on a grid to form like a combo and like get something special. And then as you put enough food down, you unlock another deck of cards. It's like, okay, well, I'm going to pick the housing now. So then you can combine the housing deck with the um, food deck, and now you're building a farm. Or you're building, you know, like oh. a... Right? And so now you're putting down those cards, and then you unlock the next set of cards, and it could be like um, forestry or mining. And now you're combining those cards. And... The reason why you want to, I mean, you can put stuff down, but if you combine, you get more points and more points unlocks new decks. And what ends up happening is at a certain point, you will just lose if you don't have any more cards to put down or decks to unlock. And it's like, all right, try again. So it's like a puzzle version of building a kingdom. Very interesting. It is one of those games that like when a video is rendering, I'm just playing because every it's time not you like play, taxing. is it like a new, is it like a new session every time you play kind of like yep. solitaire? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and when like you that. when you lose, you you get points where you can unlock new things, um, and you can get new like so. For example, if you do forestry, you can get you know like a guy, a lumberjack guy, but also you can get hunters, and then hunters will unlock different things. We can build like a forest camp, and the forest camp will unlock things where it's like okay, well now I have cards 
that are deer, but also wolves. Well, where do I put the wolves in relationship to the deer? And how do mm-hmm. I get the biggest benefit for this? That kind of thing. Or, you know, you get orchards. And if you have three orchards, you can make like a berry farm or whatever. But if you get three orchards and another building, it becomes a uh, like an apple orchard. Or if you get three orchards and a different type of building, it becomes like a winery. And you can just start messing with stuff and you have an entire map to build on. And you're not competing mm-hmm. with anyone. You're just like placing things. Fascinating. It's very strategic. It is just like a, like a clever card game masked as like a kingdom building game. Yeah, it. it it looks really like cool. a a more intensive Dwarf Romantic, mm. which I love. I play a lot of Dwarf Romantic, so um, yeah, that game always yeah. looks sick. Yeah. Oh, and um, once again, another shout out to Dystopica, a great oh, game Dystopica. that I oh, yeah. still play. Um, yeah, Alex, this is I think right up your alley. Uh, again, just a game where what is it called? Dystopica. Dystopica. Dystopica? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, just dystopic, but with a K A at the end. Oh. Uh it is a game, again, with Time zero objectives. You literally just build a cyberpunk. Ty- like the opening scene of Blade Runner. Yes, simulator. you build a Blade yeah. Runner City to Blade Runner music with Blade Runner Rain with Blade Runner vibes, and you just build a city. Very, there's very no into rules. That. As you build the city, you unlock other things, and it's just such a chill game. I will. It'll be like 11 p.m. and I'll just be sitting there in the dark, headphones on. It's like like a mountain, like like cyberpunk. Yeah, yeah. I'm just building skyscrapers and like building little cyberpunk cities, and I'm like, yeah, that feels that feels pretty good. Here's the thing. Uh, in chat, it's not a game. I agree. It's not a game. It is It is an experience. It is literally just a game that exists to be goofed with. And I love it. I, I love it. I would be remiss now that we're talking about games a little bit more. I was on the spot before. I need to mention uh, one last video game that I've been playing, if that's sure. cool with y'all. Because yeah, it, we, we have to wrap in a minute. So this is last game. Okay. This game is called Gumple. Okay. Uh, it's 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 from 1997. It's called Gumple Gunman's Proof for Super Famicom. It came out the same day as Final Fantasy VII in Japan. There's a translation of it. It's set in the Old West in like 1880s. In like, or if like the world of Earthbound goes all the way back to cowboy times, that's that. And you're like a farmhand boy, and the sheriff of the aliens comes down and tells you that there's an outlaw on your planet and he takes over your body and you go get the outlaw and it's like Zelda in Old West Earthbound and you use I'm look, it looks gun. like Zelda like it looks yeah. like Zelda mm. and it has it has like all kinds of different guns like shotgun machine gun and it's like literally a dungeon crawler it's hilarious it's cute and you will be the coolest kid in school if you ever play that game it looks <laughs> awesome this game looks amazing it's like the Can only game that? that could launch the same day as Final Fantasy VII. I love, I love this. Dude, you've just opened my horizons to a future of great possibilities. Gumple, <laughs> dude. Like, it just looks like Link to the Past. But Get, you're a little dude with a gun, better. and there's aliens. Yeah, it's like Earthbound. It's like Mother 3, Zelda, hilariousness. I don't know. Give it a look. I've been playing it on my little analog awesome. pocket, and I just cannot handle it. It's gun pull. Oh, gun not gumple. G u m p l e is not this game. That is, in fact, gun, an ooblet. G- gun pull. Gunman's proof. Ah, yeah. gun pull. Gun pull. Gun pull. Yeah. Mm. It's like it's like triple. G u n p l e. Gun. I see. Yes. Gun pull. Well, yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right, gang. We can skip the homework section today. Because we already kind of did it. We suggested three oh, movies for y'all. That's all I ever do. What? And watch the movie Sorcerer. Go There's another watch one. those movies. Oh, sor- oh my goodness. A fourth movie. Bang. Watch the movie Recruits. Sorcerer's Apprentice. No. F- okay. Well, that's actually not that bad. But watch Sorcerer. The 70s one. <laughs> um, buddy, thank you so much for coming on. I and had a grand time. What a great way to wake up. Honestly, like it's Friday <laughs> morning for me. Like I, It's I so early my for you good. guys. Thank you. 
Um, yeah, vibes. Hey, tell everybody uh, where they can find you and what you're up to this week. So there's so okay on Chalubinati we did an old west uh, kind of caper this week that you could go check out. I'm not going to spoil it. Mathis is famous for his weird old west capers. Go check that out. Um, it it me JP was on. I don't know if you ever heard of that guy, but he was on the show. Um, and on the Star Wars Old Canon Book Club, uh, we just did the newspaper strips, which was crazy. Uh, very interesting. And we're about to do uh, this week, like today, literally, we're going to record the new comics, which is like The Empire Strikes Back and Alan Moore writing a bunch of Star Wars comics, which is fucking insane. Um, and then uh, I just started a new show uh, with Pat the NES Punk. Um, it's actually, I'm just now on his show. It's like a soft reboot of his show, the not so common podcast, um, where we have two episodes out and it's just us complaining about shit, like old angry men. It's like two Larry Davids from opposite sides of the country, uh, yelling at each other about shit that doesn't matter. It's really good, really good stuff. Uh, been having a weird time on there, just kind of being on a show with a host that is so, um, different from me, personality wise. So, uh, Give it a look. It's called Not So Common, Star Wars Old Canon Book Club, Chiluminati Pod, and of course, always please support me on Superbeard Bros, the oldest show ever made. Love what you. is happening with Dodger right now? What is uh, going on? I, my headphones suddenly died, and the Type-C cable that I have plugged in is very short. That's so great. this is me for the end of the show. That's Jesse. good. Um, hey, hey, buddy, what are you up to this week? What's boy, oh vibe? boy. Uh, yeah, I mean, like Alex said, gonna do some Star Wars stuff today, but uh, tomorrow will be more Final Fantasy 14 as we continue the story. And, um, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna try and get hey, if you haven't heard already, the live show from Cox and Crendor is up online. Um, we had a great time as always, it was a blast. Thank you to everyone who came to the show. I, look, you're doing me a solid. Every time we go to Lincoln Hall and we sell that place out, they look at us like we're celebrities, and it's amazing. I must stress to you. There's, like, actual real bands with actual talent who go there, and then us. And every time you guys are, like, bringing it, and every time I, I feel like the cool hipsters that work there are like, maybe we should listen. So thank you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I guess... Uh, more the usual. Expect more Scary Game Squad up on the YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, that's, that's it for me, baby. Yeah, we recorded a bunch of them the other day. Get ready. We did. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Can you move your camera down? Like, it's, nope. it's just... It's, Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. I think it's better like this. It's more, it's more, uh, it's more honest, you know? Um, hi, everybody. I'm Dodger. Uh, thanks so much, everybody who's um, checked out Gestalt. We really appreciate it. Um, if you've left a review or even just come into chat to be like, hey, I love this game. Uh, that's amazing. Yeah, thank that's, you. Such, uh, that's such a vibe. We appreciate that. Um, we have a new roast at DodgerCoffeeCo.com. It's with Crendor. It's called Midnight Sloth. It's a dark French roast, if that's up your alley. Um, we've also got a, a new hand-thrown mug that's green and it's beautiful. So if you'd like that, um, we we'll appreciate it. Check it out. I'm also now on an anime podcast called Anime Kvult with a V. It's like Vavitch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, our first episode was about Cowboy Bebop. If you want to check that out, our second episode is going to be about Death Note. saying some shit about Note. Cowboy Bebop and mm, we beefing. Good. Because I'm a beefer now. I'm hungry. I would love some beef. I would love some beef. Thank you for inviting us. Appreciate it. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, my whole body hurts uh, hunching over like this. So, guys, thanks so much for watching, listening to uh, however you consume Geek Enders. That's amazing. The VODs, as always, are on YouTube.com slash Jesse Cox. They will not be here, so go check them out there. Uh, we're also everywhere that you can consume podcasts, if you like it, audio only. Uh, take care of yourselves, guys. Have an amazing weekend, and we'll see you next Friday. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Yeah, yeah, you know what time it is. It's time for the Geek Enders Podcast. Mega Ran, Jesse and Dodger, what up?
Let's go. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow and see what the geekenders are all about. Yo, it's the weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, stream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt. Yo, another end of another long week. Got a job and a kid, I know that you're all beat. So, take a second, grab a drink and vibe while we catch you up in just a matter of time. On gaming, comics, whatever you're doing. If you're nerdy like us, then you know you should tune in. Thank you for sharing our world with us. Now follow, subscribe, and turn this up. Yo, it's Come the on. weekend. Yeah, it's time to geek out. Let it begin. Go on, scream and shout. It's Jesse and Dodger, so give them a follow. Number one geek podcast, without a doubt.